Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be installing my custom shackle flip on the Tacoma. Let's get this thing started. So for those of you guys who are new to this channel, my name is Carl, and this channel is dedicated to all things mods, DIY, and engineering for your second and third gen Tacomas. So make sure you smash that like and subscribe button already. Do it now, guys. Come on, do it, do it! So this video is part eight of the trail damage repair series, and this also dovetails to part two of the extended travel rear suspension series. Yes, it is very confusing, but I do get into that and much more details in the last video. So make sure you guys watch that. Now let's get to work. We left off with the rear spring hangers completely removed and we also finalized the design of the shackle flip system. Now just to point out guys, there are additional steps that we do need to do in order to achieve that full droop for this system and I'll quickly touch on those. Number one, we are going to need extended brake lines and a way to lower the ABS harness and here's what I did temporarily just so that I can get the system tested. So I did take this lower brake line bracket off of the bracket on the axle housing. So this is uh, basically lifted up. This brake line bracket was also removed and loosened from the top. And this harness, I believe this is for the ABS, was on this bracket here. And I took that out too and just have it dangling. So this allows us to at least not overtax the brake lines or any of these electronic cables. Number two, the end of that tailpipe is also in the way. And usually for that mod, it would require a cut all the way back to here so that this tailpipe doesn't interfere with the leaf spring on the way down. Number three, we are going to need extended travel shocks. And I do have a few that's already spec'd out that should work with the system, but do let me know what you guys suggest and leave those thoughts in the comment section below. Last but not least, we are also going to definitely need limit straps and updated bump stops so we don't damage those new shocks. We'll tackle this problem one at a time, but for now, let's get to installing that shackle flip. So these are the old shackles that I have. They are a little bit bubbly from the corrosion. Now I did inspect the bushings. These are poly bushings and these are still in really good shape. So we're gonna pull these out and put them into the new brackets. And if you do want these exact poly bushings, I'll be linking them down in the description below. These bushings are made by Dobbinsons. All right, now that internal sleeve is gone, we'll, we'll just have to pry these poly bushings out. We'll just have to get a pry bar underneath here and then just work it around. I'll slowly work it around, just like that. Eventually, you're gonna rock it back and forth, pull them out. For the other side, we'll just take a socket and just hammer it from the opposite end. There we go. So, I'll just use a Windex, clean up all those surfaces there, and then put it uh, on the press, press it onto that upper frame bracket. We'll start with taking some wheel bearing grease. Dip my finger in there. This, this is the bracket. We'll just coat that whole interior with that wheel bearing grease. We'll also coat the insides and the outside of these bushings with the same wheel bearing grease. Take that upper bracket and then just basically press in as much as you can by hand on both ends to get it ready for the press. There we go. I think that's as far as that can go by hand. Just take it over here and then just press her down. Both sides seated properly. Now let's Press in that inner sleeve. And again, this is why I recommend you guys 
balls have a press for situations like this. Uh, it's pretty cheap also, so well worth it for your garage. Here we are at the driver's side frame, guys. In order to keep the corrosion down, I'm also gonna spray this whole area here and here with fluid film, as well as like the surrounding areas. It's just good practice because we are sandwiching the bracket up against this frame. Now we could put in the bolts. Remember, this is positioned so that it's forward to the back side of this frame. So position that just like that. And we'll put this other bolt in here. It should be able to just float without the other hardware in the meantime. And for this, I do have the bolt and a washer right up on, uh, on that bracket. Now we can put these bottom bolts in. I'm putting a washer and a nut, this nylock nut right behind it. Now we can put in the upper nut and washer. Now we are also going to put in this bolt and washer for the rear end of this frame. And before I snug any of these down, I'll put some anti-seize on the threads, future planning. And this is to the front of the thread, so as I tighten these down, those uh, the anti-seize get spread on the, those threads. Let's uh, snug it down. And uh, I'm not gonna torque it just yet. We'll uh, snug it down with starting the front the forward most on the bottom, then the rear most at the top, and then we go rear most on the bottom, and then this one's the last one. Now we can torque down all these bolts to 80 foot pounds, doing it in the same cross pattern that we did to snug them down. Last one. There we go. And we should also torque down this rear bolt to 80 foot-pounds. And just like before, I think I got an idea to hit those bolt heads with some fluid film, as well as the back end of those bolts. Now let's get these shackles on here. And for this, I did already put some wheel bearing grease in the bolts. Just throw them on there. We are going to have to manipulate that leaf spring a bit in order to get the bolts kind of seat properly. Just like that. So now let's get this opposite side mounted. Similarly, we'll have to manipulate that leaf spring. We really just need the bolt to kind of go in the hole and we'll use, we'll let the threads do the rest of the work. Just like that. Now we can put our anti-seize, not too much on that one. Anti-seize on both, washer, and then our nylock nut. And then we can snug it down with a 21 millimeter socket. All right, now ideally we would want the truck on the ground before we tighten down these shackle bolts, but I'm going to do something similar, which I'm just gonna jack up the diff and just get the spring to compress. And these we have to tighten down a uh, 100 foot pounds. All right, so let's see how much potential travel we have the suspension now that we have those shackles in. I didn't put the struts in yet because the struts are typically the limiting factor when it comes to the travel because I am going to have to upgrade these struts also to maximize the flex of the suspension. Yeah this is probably almost at resting state. I don't know if this jack will be able to handle much more weight of the truck. On this side, 
we have about nine and a half inches opposite side we got about 15 and a half inches so that's six inches of potential down travel we can still get this to bow out definitely if i reduce the leaves here but that will be a little bit of experimentation so now i know we can get at least four inches of up travel on that rear suspension if we reduce the number of leaves and the leaf spring as well as when we actually have weight in the back of this truck so as of right now on paper i'm estimating that we can get at least 10 inches of travel for this rear suspension using the stock mounts and i'm very excited for this guys i do already have a few extended travel shocks that i've specced out for my system here but if you guys have any inputs or any thoughts please leave them in the comment section below if you do want a set of this shackle flip kit it is currently available at my store so make sure you check that out go to the link in the description below anyways that's all i got for this video guys make sure you smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't yet and until next time peace out everybody